Welcome back. You're still watching the break on this 20th day of November 2023. And I want to introduce the panelists here in studio. I have uh, Senator Godfrey Osotzi, Senator of Higa County. Good morning. Good morning, Sam, and good morning to all the Kenyans, wherever you are. Great. And I have Martin Chomba, who is the chair of Petroleum Outlets Association. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And we have Nelson Koech, Member of Parliament for Belgood Constituency, also Chairperson Defence, Foreign Relations and Intelligence Committee. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Kenyans. And we're still waiting for Beatriz Alachi, Member of Parliament for Dagoretti North. As soon as she's here, she'll be joining the conversation. But in the meantime, the show continues. And you look at the front pages of the two dailies. On the standard, there's an important story there. 12 dead in floods as relief efforts begin. And the story is continued on page six of the same paper. 12 killed, heavy rains continue to pound Nyanza western regions. Numerous roads have been obliterated and critical health facilities marooned by the rising flood waters. Flash floods have submerged three wards in Bunyala, forcing thousands of households to move and so much more that you find in the paper, including on the front page of the Daily Nation, El Nino, bodies of KRA staff has recovered amid flooding havoc. And you can see the impact of um, uh, this uh, disaster that is uh, becoming uh, so intense in different parts of the country. And of course, the meteorological department is warning that uh, the enhanced rainfall is expected to remain sustained in some parts going to the end of January. Other coast, the situation that was experienced towards the end of last week into the weekend has not been seen in many years before. The records or the statistics show that at least 61 people have lost their lives and of course dozens affected by the floodwaters, hundreds affected and displaced from their homes. And to help us go through this, I want to begin by Speaking to Honorable Koech, um, as we look at this, of course, not so dire a situation in your region, but you're seeing those images in, uh, at, at the coast, rather, in some parts of Western Kenya. A few weeks ago, we sat here and we were talking about uh, the president's statement that actually it was not going to be El Nino. So much water has gone under the bridge now, quite literally. It is El Nino, confirmed. Um, what are, what are you hearing? And would you want to revise your statement? Thank you, Sam. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to revise uh, my statement because uh, that's what is happening globally, uh, looking at the patterns. Uh, global warming has happened and looking at the patterns of the rain, it's becoming extremely complicated to predict. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I want to say that it exposes the state of our counties. It is a shame that 10 years after uh, devolution, Mm. We still have a problem. Some counties still have a problem with drainage. I mean, that tells you uh, the kind of work that is going on in, in our counties. I mean, honestly, every county, and I remember the Council of Governors uh, coming out with a statement that they were fully prepared for El Nino. There is no county that at this point should be suffering from what we are seeing and the videos that are going uh, around, especially even these ones that I'm seeing from Amida House. Mm -hmm. Because there has been an opportunity to develop our county. So much money, uh, and those honorable sources will be uh, attacking on that, so much money is sent to the counties every year. There is no reason why we still have a problem of drainage in, uh, in our counties. So it has actually exposed the counties as uh, the weakest link in this situation. And I really hope that uh, this, this can be, there's a lot of money that has been given out for counties to make sure that they mitigate on the effects of floods. And I hope that many counties are going to use that fund or would rather use that fund for this, because otherwise- Was that money released after the president's statement really? The money had been set aside. I don't know if it was released to the counties or not. Even without releasing the Lino money, the counties should have been prepared by their own resource that has been allocated to them. Nairobi, like, uh, I don't know, Honorable Laji will probably tell us what is happening, but I've been reading in the newspapers that Honorable Sakaja's uh, El Nino preparedness is what has helped Nairobi County uh, to, to, to manage the situation. 
several other counties should have done the same. Look at Mombasa, for instance, and look at how the floods are and, 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 and rainwater is running across the towns heavily. It tells you that the, there is poor, poor, poor drainage in, in Mombasa. Of course, we expected so much rains, elevated rains, than we anticipated. But if you look at the situation, it is, it is exposing counties as fully unprepared. Uh, for such situation. Even though some explanation has been that, I mean, it's already a lowland, so it's flat. Where does the water go? But the drainage will happen. Uh, it has happened elsewhere. It's not only in Kenya. So should we say because it's lowland, we just uh, fold our hands and say, no, let the rain do what it wants to do. We have to be prepared. And I think, like I said, even, even rescue efforts alone mm. is very important. Okay. All right, um, and of course, uh, Honorable Beatrice Olachi now joins us on the show. Uh, good morning, Mushmo. Morning, morning, morning. Senator, tell me, because you're witnessing this and especially the traditionally <laughs> more prone areas, talking about um, some parts of the coast, but also in the northeast, and they are really affected by this. If we talk about an arrival, a lot of people displaced, and this happens almost every other season that you have this kind of rains. It looks like we never really learned the lessons on how to be better prepared for such eventualities. What then? Uh, Some I want to agree with you that uh, is a clear sign of, of failure on the part of uh, the government and uh, to some extent our county governments uh, because this has happened and we knew it was going to happen. So the question is how prepared were we as a country to deal with the, this scenario. And uh, even as uh, Honorable Nelson talks about the president, the pronouncement on this matter, I think the president owes this country an apology because he came out and said it's no, it is not going to be El Nino, it's just going to be rain. But now we have seen it is a proper El Nino and the people have lost lives, people have lost property, Mm -hmm. I think he deserves to uh, give an apology to, to Kenyans for his comments. And uh, this also mm -hmm. confirms that uh, uh, there is a problem of planning in government. And I wonder, because we, we have uh, an institution called the uh, Water Harvesting Authority, what do they really do? If they are not visible at times like this, what do they really do? And we put a lot of money into them to, to, to um, uh, harvest water. This is the time to harvest water. Because I tell you some, a few months from today, mm. we'll not be talking about rain. We'll be talking about drought. We'll be talking about loss of livestock, loss of people because of drought. I think uh, we, as a country, we must do things differently. We must plan well, and we must make sure that we use our resources. Even as uh, my good friend Nelson talks about counties, I think we should not wholly blame counties. Counties have not been uh, uh, given the funds they need to be given to, 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 to do these things. Remember, we have a bigger conversation in Senate now about the, the role of national government on matters to do with water. Mm -hmm. Water is 90% 90, uh, 90, 90 devolved. But you see, national government still clings on it. Even this water harvesting authority, apparently, it is uh, under the national government. The water agencies in our, uh, our counties are under national government. But ideally, they should be under county government. So county governments need to be empowered. And what needs to be devolved must be devolved. Mm. We cannot blame county governments, and we have taken away their key functions. We are doing them at the national level. So, yes, I uh, agree that uh, the national government and the county governments have roles, but for it to be very effective, the county governments must be empowered to help in uh, this situation. They have not been empowered. So, so what sort of empowerment are you talking about? Because I, I see in the Constitution, disaster management is a shared function. It is both at the national level, but also the county level. What sort of empowerment are you talking about? What, what I mean is that, uh, you know, this is not purely disaster. We have disaster, and we also have the issue of uh, management of water. Mm -hmm. I, I am talking about that element of uh, water harvesting. It is 
taken as a national go government function, but practically it's supposed to be a, a county government function. Why is the national government still clinging on uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, devolved functions, like water? So my water challenge is, still... Senator, if you look at the pictures in Mombasa and some parts of uh, the coast, including Kwale, there's that story that you find on the front page of the Daily Nation of uh, the bodies of two Kenya Kerry I mean employees whose vehicle was swept away by raining water. So I'm just wondering what role water harvesting would have played to uh, make sure that disaster doesn't happen. If you look at the images in Mombasa, what role would water harvesting, ha harvesting serve in such a situation? You see, they are supposed to come up with uh, various mechanisms on how to harvest this water so that that water does not end up being a danger to Kenyans. You tell me, a single, tell me a single project, uh -huh. a single project that this organization has done in our counties. There's none. We only hear them when they're looking for budgets. We only hear them once in a while in the media. But what is it they are doing on the ground? Nothing. We, we have a bill before, I think it has been passed by the National Assembly, mm -hmm. amendment to the water bill, where they're even proposing to make this uh, uh, water harvesting authority, to make it an agency, just like uh, uh, the Athi and uh, Tanathi and others, mm -hmm. uh, so that they uh, are able to even come up with things like dams, they are able to uh, come up with major water projects okay. through these uh, harvesting processes. But for now, mm. even as we are waiting for that, what is it they are doing? Okay. I'm sure there is something they can do to reduce uh, this problem uh, and also to take advantage of the rains. All right. Because the rains will come and go, and then uh, next minute, uh, next uh, a few months from now, We'll now be talking about drought. Okay. We'll be talking about loss of livestock. We'll be talking about famine. We'll be talking about loss of lives. It doesn't uh, uh, give a good picture of uh, this country, how it's being managed. Honorable Elachi, yet the of immediate importance is protecting lives and property, which is um, at risk right here, with 61 dead and more displaced and a few people missing. What are we missing here? I think we're just missing uh, both sides coordinating each other and appreciating that, you know, with disaster, you cannot say you will work alone. But also just to, to, to bring up speed, the, the, the governors. You see, uh, we, we would want the national government to come in. But we will want to see also what is the role of, of counties in all this. And for me, OK, I, I really, I have to appreciate my governor, Sakaja. Uh, the first thing he did was to employ the young people who have been trying to look at the, because all of these challenges we are facing is because of drainage. Mm -hmm. If you have the right drainage, then you can move uh, and, and, and now say, Either the waters are too much, uh, they, 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 and, and that is why. But if you have correct drainage, then you are able to see the waters moving and going to the rivers, and, and that's Nairobi River now. The, most, the other thing we must agree, all of us, is uh, starting from where we do our planning in terms of buildings. We approve the buildings, fine. We, 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 we want to now, every year when we have rain, we see this. Every year. We will always complain there's drain, the lack of drainage, lack of sewer, all this. The, the question is from both sides of government, because now this is beyond, it, the counties will need support also from national government. Mm -hmm. What we need to be asking is, when they say they're prepared, and I remember a chair of Council of Governors uh, gave in a good report and said, counties will remove these amounts and uh, put it for preparation, mm -hmm. ready <coughs> to see whether there's a Nino or El Nino. So meaning you had already some funds. So what happens? What happened to the funds of Mandera, the funds of uh, Mombasa? And let us, I, I would wish Senate can also question one thing. We cannot be going 15 years of devolution. Monies have always gone to counties. And we are not questioning 
you know, that is why it is becoming so tough for Kenyans. Not that the, any, everywhere we decided to devolve our culture of just taking everything, whether it is in Mandela, because there are some counties, you know, if we were very serious, some, mm -hmm. there are some counties that started ground zero, meaning you had an opportunity to come up with your plan of government in 20, when we were 13, when we were now just getting into devolution, mm -hmm. that you would have learned the mistakes of the national government and done something better that can be a model. But look what we did. Look at Turkana, look at Mandela, and yet Kenyans agreed we are going to strain to ensure the marginalized areas that were called marginalized will get the highest amount so that they can build themselves. Okay. So you, you, you are, they, they want to tell us just drainage could not be done until now we are calling in. If we are calling in the national government for drainages, then we are in a problem, especially for Mombasa. We are in a problem. Right. Meaning they, what they need to do mm. is you can also just go back to what the constitution says and bring in a program that you can coordinate, you, you can ask national government this function we want you to help us to rebuild it properly, and after that, you hand it over. Just the same way we, we, Sonko did for Nairobi before we went into the madness. But you see, he had agreed on a regeneration program that was doing very well. Mm. That's how many roads, that's how many of these things were done in the slum. Right. The same way with every of these counties. But for now, now that we are having these challenges, the national government has to come in because it's becoming a disaster, and we need to see now how do we assist people? We can't see people in Tana River uh, just moving the way they are moving. There must be a way national government must come in and start uh, calling in for assistance from other uh, partners who normally support Red right. Cross and the rest to come in. All right, Martin, what are your thoughts? Because uh, there's a student who has just cleared writing her KCSE exam was heading home and unfortunately, the floods were too heavy and uh, she clung on to a uh, loose cable and she was electrocuted and she died. And it's just one of the images of what this disaster is. And when we sit here and have a conversation, their lives and property at risk here. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Sam, it's very unfortunate that this is happening in our country today. <laughs> Um, 60 years after independence. Um, I would I'd want to think, in my opinion, that what we have perfected in this uh, country over so many years is the art of uh, passing the baton, passing the blame. Um, today, when we talk about uh, the issues of flood, flooding in this country, mm -hmm. it cannot escape the right uh, culprits. Today, we have contractors who make roads. Most of these drainages are along the roads that have been contracted by either county or national government and have been cleared to have been done well. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that um, the other day, it is also very concerning. I was seeing in Mombasa, a whole petrol station submerged in water. And you know what that means. The density of uh, pet petrol is lighter than that of water. So should the, the, there be an issue in terms of uh, how these people do dipping, water gets into the tank and all the fuel gets out of the, uh, this, 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 the, um, the tanks. Mm. How can we not talk about the authorities that are taking care of our roads today? We must blame the people that give the clean bill of health in terms of uh, those drainages, uh, the, the, the authorities that um, do the planning, because when you're doing a road, and every county, as we speak today, has had a road or two done recently, leave alone those that were done before devolution. There are those that have been done recently. What I mean is, if there were proper drainages among the main roads, mm. it is very easy to take care of this water. When you talk about Mombasa being a lowland, it is the, the precise the reason why there should be a lot of planning. Because we already know that this lowland. So what will happen is that if we don't have enough drainages, 
then it's going to be a disaster. And most of the times we wait up until then. I also must join the choir that is saying thank you to Sakaja because this Nairobi is, has been one of the biggest culprits uh, previously. But today there has been a lot of rains and we have not seen that of, uh, uh, in terms of um, the way he employed some young people who when you are moving around Nairobi you would see them clearing those drainages. It sometimes is taken like a, a populist idea but we can see the results. So my idea is we must blame roads some today i want you to look at something the major roads that are being done there are usually some um uh, i don't know what you call them reflectors that are put on the road mm. at night when you're driving if you're driving from nakuru today whoever did that road did very well because once you put your headline out you can see the road you can actually drive even without full lights and you're okay but most of these roads which have been cleared they don't even have the markings they don't and that cascades it's also the part and parcel of what happens? And there's somebody who is employed to clear those roads and they clear them without drainage. And that's how we find ourselves where we are today. Okay. All right. And you continue to cover the stories and hope for solutions, at least to save lives and property. We're taking a short break here, but when we come back, we'll be talking about the state of politics. The former president is out and has spoken, uh, says that the current administration needs to deal with its issues without blaming him. We'll talk about that after the break.